I think the, the biggest shock people is like, where, how come I didn't know about him? How come we don't know? I mean, how come we didn't know that there was this person? And the reason why we don't know <laughs> is simple, because Beethoven took his name off of Sonata. <laughs> My name is Francie Williams and I am the author of the book The Abyssinian Prince which is based on the true life story of George Polgreen Bridgetower. That most people read the book think is not true. This can't be true. <laughs> and I have to say it's true. I mean, there's those, there's places where his life is silent and I had to fill in those blanks somewhat. I mean, I obviously dialogue, but the, the, the breadth of the story, it's true. And I, and I, most people that read it just are shocked that there was this, um, you know, um, person of color, so very close to Beethoven too, that no one's ever heard about him. And why haven't? And the funny thing is that when I went looking for his name and it was there, but it was just kind of looked over. Polgrim Bridgetower was a renowned black British violinist virtuoso who lived from 1778 to 1860. He was raised at the estate of the Hungarian prince Esterhazy, a patron of Haydn and the employer of Bridgetower's father, John Frederick Bridgetower. After studying with his father and Haydn, Bridgetower had his violinist debut at the Concert Spirituel in Paris at the age of 10. Following his violinist debut, Bridgetower moved to London and began performing in Paris, London, Bath, and Bristol. Eventually, Bridgetower connected with the Prince of Wales, who sponsored his music education. studied with Francois Hippolyte, Bartholomew, Giovanni Giornovici, and Thomas Atwood. Much later, Prince Loniski introduced Beethoven and Bridgetower and financed a concert on May 24, 1803, in which Beethoven and Bridgetower played Beethoven's Sonata No. 9 in A major, Opus 47. There was not enough time to copy the violin part, so Bridgetower had to read it from Beethoven's manuscript, but the performance was a success. This sonata was originally dedicated to Bridgetower and inscribed with the following note. Sonata mulatica composta per il mulato bridge dar gran passo e compositore. Beethoven gifted Bridge Tower his own personal tuning fork, and it is now housed in the British Library. 
However, Beethoven and Bridgetower's relationship eventually crumbled, and Bridgetower's name was removed from the piece. Beethoven instead rededicated the piece to Rudolf Kreutzer who never performed it. After the falling out, Bridgetower went on to be elected to the Royal Society of Musicians in 1807, and he earned a Bachelor of Music from Cambridge University in 1811. Little is known about the later years of Bridgetower's life. He is presumed to have died penniless, and after his falling out with Beethoven, he faded into obscurity. George Polgreen Bridgetower is buried in the Kensal Green Cemetery in London. We were inspired to learn about George Bridgetower when we read a novel based on his life, The Abyssinian Prince by Francie Greer Williams. This novel is the only full-length book inspired by Bridgetower's life. London, 1860. A man is dying. He sees no angels. There are no trumpets blaring or celestial voices calling out his name. He had a good life. He is dying an old and happy man because he knows he has left a part of his soul behind in the music. While he will die alone and without incident, no one will find his body until it has grown hard and cold from lack of life. If there are tears at his funeral, they will be from those who knew the man he was many, many years ago. No one would mourn the death of the elderly man who was lying weak in the bed. He felt the last breaths as they emerged from his lungs, so he reached for the only love that had remained constant and faithful for all of his life. He strained as he grasped his feeble hand for his violin. He struggled and used what little life remained in his weathered body. Finally, he took hold of his precious friend and clutched it to his chest as if it were a delicate child. He embraced and loved it one last time. A single tear fell from his aged eyes and landed on the violin. It crashed and unleashed a lifetime of obsession and dedication. My princess, he said, whispering his final words. His careful grip suddenly relaxed. His lifeless hands dangled off the side of the bed. The angel had arrived. The Abyssinian prince is dead. Mm -hmm.